audience and watching from their living rooms at home. Welcome to the Downtown Podcast and welcome to our brand new spanking venue which has been generously um, provided by the scullery. Um, we have two awesome community guests to speak to tonight. The first of which is um, behind uh, a magazine you may have heard of. It's called Creating Genius. So we're here with Lee to talk about that. But before we start, I'm going to get you to pick out the fortune cookie of the week for us. Yeah, okay. Just anyone I want. Just anyone you like. This one. Awesome. Okay, can we get our fortune cookie handler, Alan, to come out? Thank you, Alan. <laughs> 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 Improvising. So what's going to happen is this fortune cookie is going to be handed to the person right at the back of our live audience. They are going to open the fortune but not show anybody. And we're going to play a game of telephone where that gets whispered along the line of people, almost like in a conga snake line. And it's going to reach the last person at the front, hopefully by the end of the episode. Um, and at that point, we're going to ask them what the fortune of the week is. So it's going to be a good closer. But moving back to Lee, um, Creating Genius magazine. For those who haven't heard of it before, tell us a little bit about what's in it and, and, and what started it. Sure. So... Creating Genius Magazine, or CG Magazine, uh, it's a digital publication focused on the lifestyle of the entrepreneur. So you know, our content is, revolves heavily around that. Entrepreneurs, business leaders, creative thinkers, uh, and entrepreneurs are naturally, they're big thinkers, they're dreamers. And we want to help dreamers become doers and be a potential catalyst for their rise to the top. That's super awesome. So you profile some pretty big names in entrepreneurship as well as up and coming people, right? Yeah, we've been reaching out to a lot of people, especially in downtown Vegas and across the country um, with a big entrepreneur scene. I guess San Francisco, New York, Austin. Um, and that's been half the fun, reaching out to these people, hearing their stories, uh, where they're going, and then sharing that with people who want to listen. This is a super cool magazine. Yeah. So what, what really makes me happy is that because obviously you live in Vegas, you're profiling a lot of Las Vegas entrepreneurs that don't always get that spotlight because, you know, it's normally all about Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, we've been, um, it's been interesting downtown Las Vegas. We have a national reach, but, you know, 85% of our distribution is in, is in Las Vegas. So, you know, with the growing entrepreneur scene and the growing tech startups, um, you know, the local magazines already here haven't really tapped into that, so you know there's a big opportunity for a CG magazine to showcase the entrepreneurs. I like that a lot. Yeah. And so, how did this magazine get started in the first place? I hear it was kind of this really lovely organic growth that, that yeah. came about I mean, through I serendipity. <laughs> I want to say collisions. I mean, you hear that in downtown, but mm -hmm. you know that's just another collision story. Um, I was working with some startups downtown with at work in progress and uh, doing a lot of content, ran into a, a really creative designer and publisher, Michael Durant. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing a lot of content for him and a blog got traction. We kind of spun that off into its own separate entity and then uh, yeah, Creating Genius kind of evolved from that into something really, really cool. I love that a lot because having that kind of growth organically creates that genuine audience yeah, and that kind definitely. of thing. So um, how often do you release issues and when is the next one coming out? Yeah, so we're releasing on web this coming Tuesday, July 8th, and you know after that we're going to go digital, um, which is going to be on iPads and on mobile, and that's going to be a little more formal with a lot of design. That's going to be in September, mm -hmm. and after that it'll be one issue every two months. Um, up until that point, you can go to cgeniuslife.com, C with C Genius, um, join the waiting list until Tuesday, or just go on Tuesday and, uh, and check us out. Every two months is an impressive effort because I, yeah. I definitely see what goes on behind the scenes when making a magazine. So yeah, that's really, yeah, really awesome. Especially with the small team that we have. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's, uh, it's too much fun to, to stop. So. <laughs> awesome. And I hear that we've got a little bit of crossover in the podcast family too right. with contributing. Definitely. We, are, are, we have a growing list of contributors. Uh, we are looking for more, but um, we've been making a lot of the right connections and right partnerships. And we've actually partnered with Downtown Podcast, and Evelyn over here is a, a regular contributor, and it's, it's worked out really well. Downtown Podcast will have their own section um, inside the magazine, and uh, you know, we both have the same goals. We're doing the, we complement each other, so a, a partnership just makes sense. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask Evelyn about that yeah, in a second. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and sure. um, I hope people um, check out your website to actually read your zine, if you want to give that to the audience just one more time. Yeah, cgeniuslife.com. C with the C, C Genius. Awesome. Yeah. Thank Woo. you so much. All right, thank you. Yeah. Cool. So we are really excited to um, announce a new addition to the um, Downtown Podcast family. Her name is Evelyn, and she is going to be our marketing director. Yep. And she's, we've already started benefiting from her coming onto the team. She's been doing some really good spins on stuff. So um, 
we wanted to welcome her and put her in front of the camera and in front of the audience so that people uh, know her face and know that she's kind of going to be our community connection, right? So right. why don't you tell us a bit more about that? Well, say thanks for that warm welcome. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to have the opportunity to kind of let you guys see my face. I'm a new addition to the Downtown Podcast team, and I really want to be a tool for the community uh, for you guys to reach out. And I know that the podcast really relies on the community to tell us about new content, new um, arrivals to the city, and anything cool, fun, and going on. So I would be that person to reach out to. So you can email me at evelyn at downtownpodcast.tv. And I'm also doing some fun marketing promotion for the podcast. Yeah, so tell me about this here. So this little uh, llama, it's actually a lamb. I know it's a lamb. <laughs> I, I can identify my dolls. But we're going to pretend it's a llama because there's such a tie to that. Um, okay to that little cute animal uh, with the downtown community. But I decided that I was going to take the lamb llama along with me on my travels and photograph her in front of you know different places that I went. And so I think in the back here, we're going to have a slideshow of some places. I was just oh, at, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I was just in Mexico recently. So I thought a good way to support the podcast while I was away was to um, you know post photos of the llama. Even though I was in another country, I could still support you guys. That's really cool. Thank you so much for doing that. And it's it's nice to have like a mascot as well. You know, we have yeah. the sign, but now we have the mascot. Cool. Right. So like you've been contributing back about our podcast guests, right, to Korean yes. Genius Magazine? So uh, weekly I'm going to be contributing something to profile the guests that are on our show. So you can actually see the content, you know, with our web series, but you can also read about them in Lee's magazine. So you'll have dual content there, but it'll be a great reach for everybody to reach out and see who's in the community. Fantastic. So one more time, how can people reach out to you again? Evelyn at downtownpodcast.tv or my Twitter account is E-V-M-A-R-S-A-B. Nice and easy. Sure. Well, please join me in thanking Lee and also a very warm welcome to Evelyn to our team. And that ends our community segment. Outcast now. Just uh, who's, who's been there? And then the whole audience erupts? I love it. <laughs> okay, so I guess you guys already know them, but this is uh, Pamela and Christina. They are the owners and creators and entrepreneurs that are behind the Velveteen Rabbit, a very fun place to drink, it seems like. Boogie. Yeah. Nice and safe. No, it's not yet. That's, a, that's a run through over there. Okay, we'll look for the boogie later. Okay, so uh, first off, so you guys are great entrepreneurs, but I was surprised to hear that this doesn't exactly, that you weren't born with it running through your blood. So you are lo local natives to mm -hmm. Las Vegas, but um, tell me about how you went from just being a couple of people who are going to Vegas, like, you know, it, here in Vegas, local, to being an entrepreneur that's now got a great business. All right, well, we grew up here, so hanging out, going around Las Vegas downtown. Um, I didn't feel a huge connection to the city, and I ended up leaving. I was living in Portland, Oregon, uh, Tokyo. Um, Christina went off to San Diego, and then she was traveling to India, Nepal, and Thailand. So we got a lot of experience in other places, and that really inspired us. Yeah, and the weird thing was, so you're four years older? Or which one's older? I'm She's older. older. Okay. <laughs> you both look so young. I don't know. Oh, thank, <laughs> you. But, uh, thank you. But, yeah, but, but be, because you skipped college, right? No, no. Oh. Neither of us did. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, <laughs> no okay. Graduate. So good graduate. We are, we I are failed, four so years apart college, as far as so. schooling is concerned. So when she graduated from college, I was graduating from high school, and we both left at that, oh, okay. that point. Oh, okay. the same yeah. time. Catch you. Sorry. I'm the college dropout. <laughs> uh, fair enough that's that all I right. forgot that one. So. Okay. Now. So you went to different places. How did that change you, and how did you, eventually you come to start this business? Sure. Um, I was really influenced by Portland, Oregon. There are so many independent business owners there. Um, Tokyo was really inspiring as well. Christina had a lot of inspiration living in San Diego, especially uh, with the budding beer scene there. Craft beers and craft cocktails really um, were amazing. Like in 2006 was a huge explosion in the cities we we're living in. So that definitely contributed. Okay, so you just, you were like, there's such a need for these drinks. We should bring this back to Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I felt clever, like for us, like, we wanted a community-driven place, so we wanted great craft cocktails, craft beers, and then also a place for art and music. So, yeah. Okay. Christine actually came up with the idea for the bar, so. You're, you're the original? <laughs> right. So you pushed her into it? 
Or you, yeah, you I, were like, it was, okay, a, I got it was a small push. <laughs> she was, exactly. I was like, do you want to do this? And she was She's like, um, yes. Yeah, I do, yes. actually. Kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, uh, so one of the things, a lot of the people who watch the show are sort of these, like, early entrepreneurs. So talk about how you went from not really thinking that you could be entrepreneurs to, like, the moments of serendipity that made it so you changed your mind. Sure. Um, well, it's something that was kind of on the back of my mind for a while, like opening either a restaurant or a bar, but it didn't really... Because you hate working for the man? <laughs> yeah, pretty okay, much. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, d I never wanted a gotcha. nine to five, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so actually, the, the biggest moments of serendipity, I guess you could say, were when I was traveling. So in India, Nepal, and Thailand, I, I was traveling for five months, and within that span of time, I just got more and more inspired. There was someone I met that had um, ridden his bike from oh. from. I thought, you, I thought you were going to say a bunch of money to get uh, there. No, so no. that's a good, yeah, okay. But that would be nice. Yeah, 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 where are those people? Um, yeah, <laughs> he was riding his bike from London to India in six months. And another girl who was shipping um, a bunch of goods from Thailand back to the States, and she was going to go to different music festivals and sell that. And I just... So you just felt like you could do it. Like you're yeah. like these people are similar to me, and exactly. they're, they're able to be entrepreneurs. And why not? You might as well try, right? And, right. Or else no, you'll that's always true. regret that it. That is true. Yeah. I think that was our biggest like inspiration. Is like, like why not? Why not? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be on my deathbed. Why not just try something? Yeah. yeah. I think we've always been like go-getters. Like just go out and do what you want to do. And okay. you know, even if you fail, at least you tried. Right. You know? gotcha. Okay. So did you save up money yourselves, or did you go raise money, or like how did you actually break this barrier where you're just somebody with an idea and then it looks like it fell into place. Like, talk about the people sure. and resources that were needed. Sure. Um, in the beginning, we absolutely had zero funds, so we started saving immediately. We both um, ended up living with our parents for oh, a yeah. period of time. Um, you know, saved our own money, which we ended up saving a lot, which is great. And then we got some investors as well. Um, and then we had um, a really great moment where we ended up meeting our landlord. Uh, of the building, and he, you know, coincidentally wanted his building to be a bar. Mm. Uh, this guy and was this purposeful. Like, did you seek him out, or was it coincidence you were just drinking and they were like, "Hey, I own this building." Well, it was someone I knew. He was in the arts district. He actually, yeah. it's Wes Miles who um, opened the arts factory. So he's been a, a mainstay in the arts district for quite a while, like over 20 years. Um, so I was actually seeking his advice, like, how do we get started? He had just opened a bar in the arts factory at that point. And uh, we kind of had a conversation, and then one thing led to another, and we realized that we were kind of looking at the same location. Oh, okay. And uh, it was With the one next door. Actually, yeah, we were looking crazy. at the building next door, but uh, the owner of that building wasn't really like looking to really help us with TI tenant improvements. So, um, in that conversation, he ended up telling us that he owned the building next door to it, gotcha. and he wanted it to be a bar. So that moment, that, that moment, like, that Whoa. moment kind of clicked. <laughs> yeah, I was. Do you, us, do you remember that moment? Was that like was oh, that really special? Absolutely. Like your heart started we were beating, I'm looking, guessing. Or? We were looking at each other, and I was like, "What are you thinking?" You know. But and then you try to conceal it to, to keep your toughness. <laughs> sure, sure. So you're like mm, a little bit. You know, I had to play. You know, keep some of my cards to myself. But um, for the most part, I think like when you see certain things happen, like certain steps or people you meet unfolding, you kind of have to go with that right. that intuition. And we, so many doors were opening up to us, so that was a big one. And we, we went for it, we started working with him. That's sweet, okay. So I, you know what, I think we'd, we could do a boogie. Oh, uh, give buggy. us a little bit better like boogie that. Boogie time? <laughs> boogie. Okay, nobody will understand what that is, but that means, <laughs> that means we're gonna find out why all this stuff's in all front right. of us. So I, so I wanna talk about what makes you different from a lot of the other bars, mm -hmm. and it seems to be, I guess, these custom cocktails or craft Absolutely. cocktails. I don't know, I hear, I hear the word craft, mm -hmm. I hear the word, it just seems complicated, so just explain <laughs> it all to me. All right, so it was really important for us um, to use fresh ingredients, okay. um, make our own syrups, fresh juice every day. Um, that's very important for craft cocktails. You know, you go to a lot of bars and they'll have like pre-made sour mix and that's something we want to stay away from. Um, so we actually and what, what, what do you mean craft cocktails? It's just like, is that different sure. than just when they make a cocktail or like are um, you crafting it up? You're so like really, <laughs> you're a crafty person or like what's it? Well, sure. Okay, so there's classic cocktails, um, like Old Fashioned was one of the first right. craft cocktails. Um, basically, um, a cocktail consists of sugar, bitters, um, a spirit, and juice usually. Mm. Um, so 
we actually make our own menu. Uh, it's roughly seasonal. This is our summer menu that is currently available. Guys and girls can order on this? Oh, of oh, course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but look cool? They're unisex okay. cocktails. Okay, unisex. <laughs> okay, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I had, a, I had a whiskey sour incident, so I gotta get over that. So, so. I think, <laughs> well, you know, so the cocktail scene can be, um, you know, it can be comparable to like the culinary scene. You know, you okay. see all these cool things happening in restaurants, and you know, we have so many restaurants at our disposal, disposal at uh, in Las Vegas. So, cocktails in the same sense. So, fresh ingredients, great spirits. Um, so, I would love to make a snake doctor for you. Yeah, it sounds that great. That sounds good. No, right <laughs> in my alley. Yeah. It's a takeoff of a classic cocktail known as the Bee's Knees. Oh. All right. So. Uh, the main spirit in our snake doctor here is going to be gin. We're using bee feeder. Can you make these two, or is it only her? Oh, yeah. You guys both have the skill? Yeah, we okay. all collaborate for the menus. So mm, we each gotcha. come up with a couple and then um, get together as a group and discuss. So it's intense, it's intense training if you want to work yeah, here? Yeah, it's fun. It takes right. about a month or so. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We, make, yeah. we tweak them a little bit, but some yeah. fresh lemon juice here. Okay, so we're looking at gin, the Snake Doctor, gin, raspberry, mm -hmm. lemon, sage, honey, and salt. Eight dollars. Yes. Okay. And do you ever have a happy hour or something? Yeah, we do a dollar off of everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just so walk, walk me through what. All right. Uh, so I did um, an ounce and a half of beef theater gin. I did three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. I did an ounce of, uh, we made a sage honey uh, syrup with a little bit Ooh, of salt. I can smell that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I put in a fresh that's raspberry. The, that's, the, that's the secret ingredient, right? <laughs> <laughs> that mix? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, all, we try to make as many in-house syrups as possible, um, which you can get really creative on. We're going to just fill the shaker up with some ice. Give it a good shake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's harder sitting, I think, probably. <laughs> nice so and frosty. All right, on the 10. So intense. <laughs> and then we're going to strain it into a coupe. We've got that What's nice the the color there. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Fresh raspberry. <laughs> All right, and then we have a sage raspberry garnish. If you could see a little rabbit, if you will. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Isn't that Cheers. <laughs> nice. Dylan, if All you right. will. <laughs> As the least qualified person for tasting this. <laughs> mm. Five stars. Yeah. Right. Like it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys right. so much for coming out. I appreciate it. So you guys, um, you can follow you on Twitter. You got velveteen underscore bar. Mm -hmm. But you said Facebook's kind of the big thing, right? Like instead of website. And you're uh, Velveteen Rabbit LV. So Facebook.com mm -hmm. forward slash Velveteen Rabbit LV. And then um, the, one of the things I want to say, so anybody here in the audience, if you guys want to know how to make these drinks, you guys are doing a mixology class. Just Absolutely. touch on that before we send off. Yeah, we've Mind. been doing um, oh, it. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Drink it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been doing, we've been hosting some mixology classes, um, a lot of bachelorette parties, corporate events, team building, or if you're interested in learning about mixology, yeah, we are hosting a lot of those events, so please email us at velveteenrabbitlv at gmail.com. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Pamela, Christina. Thank you guys for coming thank out. You. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for having You guys, us. check out the Velveteen Rabbit, and I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that so much. All right, Jane, you are my favorite. So you have made some amazing things in the past, and you know that I eat way too much fast food, and I've been trying to get off garbage. So I did the whole Soylent thing. I've been like 16 days of just like mostly just drinking all my meals. But um, I definitely, like, I get headaches. I'm, like, sick. I hate people who eat food because I'm jealous of them. So, <laughs> like, what, what are you doing over at your new, at your new um, juice bar? Yeah, so... Um at Grassroots, I really wanted to take a, uh, an approach to showing people how to eat healthier by m making the best tasting smoothies that, uh, that are actually that are out there, better than any other juice bar that I've ever been to, which would inc have to incorporate the um, superfoods that I've sourced from all over the place. And so um, in this juice bar, like you can order, uh, instead of a frappuccino, you can order a veggie chino. And in ah. this veggie chino, 
um, it would have the raw chocolate instead of using a processed chocolate and avocado, spinach, whole coffee beans. So at the same time, you're, when you want to get your coffee fix, you're getting your uh, vegetables for the day. So we just mix and match things together. And so the, you don't taste any vegetables at all. And the uh, drink that I have here today is called the Holy Grail of Greens, which is our number one bestseller. And so in this drink, you can get um, antioxidants and anti-inflammatories and chlorophyll and niacin and I mean, all, all kinds of goodness that comes through these drinks. There are a lot of people, like especially with these juice bars popping up where you have these um, extracted juices and you go on these three day detoxes and it's supposed to reset and change everything. But um, there is no quick fix to anything. What you really have to do is you have to change the way you eat entirely. You have to remove the toxins from your body. A few are all right because your body is completely resilient to handling a, um, a substantial amount of toxins, but it can only go so far. So at this uh, at grassroots, I, and it's it's actually proven to be quite successful that. Um, everyone's kind of jumping on board to wanting to eat healthier and wanting to be more educated. Yeah, well, but you gotta understand, like, so I sit there and I program for hours, and like, I don't move until the hunger hurts so bad. Right. That, like, I can't avoid a pizza. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's a time thing. Yeah. And right? I have to tell you that I'm doing the same thing to myself. Being a first-time business owner, I have completely neglected my health because I mean, you only have so much time in a day, and if I didn't have these juices in front of me and that wasn't a part of my job, I really don't know how <laughs> I would true, get the yeah. nutrition that I would need in my body. But um, this is just a quick fix for anybody. And so, so, <laughs> what's going on? Those are edible, right? The sage is, right. the sage is in your butt and vine when you guys come in. The That's sage is a good, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we love them. Right. Okay. So, so what's, uh, yes. what are you doing with all this stuff? So here? this is what we're doing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about your about Soylent, and I'm also gonna talk to everyone everybody here about the magic of fruits and vegetables. Okay. And remember, and so Shane's got a juice bar called Grassroots right over the Johnny Carson <laughs> building, about right. three blocks from here. Right. So okay, so when we think of fruits and vegetables, we always try to narrow them down to their nutrient value. So we think of a banana as having potassium, as an orange as having vitamin C. Right. But um, that's actually that much of the entire equation. The reason why we eat fruits and vegetables is because of the electric magnetic currents that is transferred from our body from one living thing to another living thing. So if you guys ever watch the Discovery Channel and you watch a lion go in for its food, you don't watch that lion uh, flay that flay that meat and then throw it in a barbecue and throw high fructose barbecue sauce on it and eat it later for Fourth of July. They're immediately eating <laughs> that meat, taking those electric magnetic currents into their body. And so there is no replacement for whole food. It's just plain and simple. I get asked all the time. They go, "Well, what is the perfect diet?" And the perfect diet is plain and simple: eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So now it's up to you to discover what is actually food. So food is anything that we can recognize. It's nothing in a package. It's nothing with claims on it that says added uh, vitamin C and omega-3s. That stuff just naturally has that. So if you go buy avocados, you're not going to see any claim on a bag of avocados. You're just buying avocados because you know they're good for you. And so in these drinks, I'm going to make you guys a little drink here. All right. So in this holy grail of green, so the difference between what we do at grassroots and other juice bars that are popping up is that there's this juice fad happening with all these bottled cold-pressed cold juicing. And the difference between cold-pressed juicing and eating whole foods is you're eating the juice, which is the purest form of water, but it has tons of sugar. So you need the skin, you need the pulp, you need the fiber, you need the whole oh, entire geez. thing. So I'm gonna throw in some grapes. So almonds are not a superfood, but cashews are because of the uh, monosaturated fats that are in cashews, and um, they have, the, uh, they have uh, the highest dose of niacin of any food that you can get. Niacin really balances, balances out your hormones more than any prescription pill, Oof. anything you put in your body. And then, <laughs> so kidding. the vegetables, how you, so how you determine what vegetable is healthier is which one's greener. Kale's number one, uh, collard greens is number two, watercress is number three, spinach is number four. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put in some aloe. Now, this is something that nobody thinks about what eating. What is that thing? This is raw aloe. So raw aloe yes. is one of the biggest superfoods on the aloe. planet. It's Woo! used, yeah. yeah. That, that was like, that was aloe, like a holla. So they use it. 
in our, I love you. I love you. I love you? Uh, oh, I love what? you. What the hell is that? I have never so, seen that. That is like a You cut around the skin, you take out the gel, and that is one of the number one things for inflammation that you can possibly get your hands on. And the great thing about aloe, you can grow it anywhere. And so we're going to put in that. I'm going to put an apricot. So in this particular drink, I took out the pit. But if you go in, like if you have, um, if you go to, to one of these holistic places, if you have cancer or um, any kind of ailment you could possibly think of, one of the things that the apricot pit does is you can take, break open the pit, you can take the acorn out of the apricot, and you can actually juice that. And the cyanide in the apricot pit actually stops cancer cells from growing. Oranges, take off the zest. Lemon and lime, you leave the zest on. It's not acidic. It's really good for your body. And then oh, also what we do at Grassroots is uh, we actually, on the Huntridge uh, Facebook uh, website, uh, there, we have a lot of great feedback on our juice bar, but one of the negative things that we got was um, that our prices were a little bit high. And so I said, look it, get him down here. I want to do a whole little, I want to do an explanation of why we have what we have, why it costs what it costs, and there's no point in juicing if you're going to go to Fresh and Easy or Vons or Smith's and you're going to buy conventionally grown fruits and vegetables with pesticides, with no minerals in the soil. So you're saying your margins aren't super huge? Our margins are not super huge. Okay, so huge. the money is going into the food. The money is going into okay. the love of what we do and to what juice bars are really meant for. A Jamba juice is meant for satisfying your taste buds. But a juice bar like Grassroots is meant for educating and because there's a different mindset. If you go to Old Face Donuts, you're going for a donut and you're going for a cup of coffee and there's no thinking about it. You just want a quick fix. For someone that would come into Grassroots and pay $11 for a smoothie, that is somebody who's really thinking about how they want to start off their day, their weight, if they're not feeling well. And I get these questions all the time. What can I take to boost my immune system? What can I take to lose weight? What can I take as a meal replacement? So there's a lot of thought from the customer. So there's got to be a lot of thought mm. from the service that we provide. Because you can't pull one past us because these are volunteers. That's like, right. We don't, we don't make money. <laughs> right. We don't have to advertise. And so with the, uh, <laughs> with the sweeteners that we have, so a lot of people, they use um, agave. Just so you guys know, agave is not great. Agave is a starch, like corn is a starch, and the way it's processed is very similar to high fructose corn syrup. So there's a lot of same side effects. So what we use instead of agave is something called coconut palm sugar, which is sold in the superfood aisles, and you actually get nutrients from using the sweetener, and it's very low in the glycemic index and doesn't spike your insulin levels at all. So we're using that, and then this is my favorite thing that I have at the juice bar, and everybody's catching on now. So when you go and order a smoothie, you'll see on the top, Sweet Greens, Ancient Delight, Super Berry, and uh, whatever the other one is, I can't remember. So what I did was I bought a ton of superfoods and I created four different flavors. And with those four flavors, each one of them complements a smoothie or a juice or a soup that you might order at the juice bar. So this particular one right here is uh, the Super Berry, which is made with purple corn, Purple corn is 10 times more antioxidants than a blueberry. It's made with ashwagandha root, which is used to alkalize the body. It's used in Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and it's made with hemp seed protein, which is by far the best protein you can put in your body. And we have mesquite powder, which is, has more antioxidants than almost anything you can name, even more than garlic, ginger, or anything else. So our ice. So what point would it make, well, I mean, what would be the, oh, the yeah, point yeah, of, of making this drink if we're going to use ice from tap water? So we have an alkalizer on our machine. The ice is as healthy as the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> okay, so why not just chew up your food? Keep you would never right chew there. your food that much. This machine just chews your food 100,000 times. It's broken down to a cellular level. So now when you drink this drink, instead of digesting 30% of the nutrient value, you digest almost 100% of the nutrient value with all the pulp and the fiber. So here, I want you to try this out. I've been drinking this juice for 97 years. Okay. It's amazing. <laughs> there you go. There's some liquor in it. Throw some liquor uh, in there. And what's this one called again? This is called the Holy Grail. The most common, she says it's the most popular one the over most at most popular Christmas. one. And I already know you don't like carrots, you don't mm. like kale. Don't bullshit me. I gotta tell you though, but it beats foraging for nuts and fighting lions. It does, right? Yeah. Right. Mm. Fighting lions. Uh. Killing lions. No, it's really good. I like you it. You can handle it, right? I can definitely handle it. No, you should. This soy lion thing I'm eating tastes like crap, man. Hold on. Like, this thing see. is so much better. Maybe we could, yeah, we could probably. We got a bunch of cups Let's here for the audience. So. Yeah. Okay. But, um. All right. We That's should wrap it, it up. So, we'll what's wrap the, it so up. make sure, let, what, what do you, give me your address, tell people where they can 
We're, we're going to pass that to the audience, but where can they come check you out? We are the at the, we're at the Johnny Carson building on 6th Street and Suite 120. The name of the okay. uh, juice bar is called Grassroots. Oh, and good. Okay. We're open from 7 to 3. Oh, right, this was like a last minute find for the cup here, so. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out. We yeah, will get to everybody in the audience. You guys can come on up and grab some. So, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. you. Yeah, that was really good. It was thank really, you, really good. So I know you as the owner of the awesome DeLorean, but for those who don't know about you, what is your name? I'm Ryan. So the, Ryan came to make a fair and it's awesome. And he's also drinking our wonderful grassroots sponsors drink. But he has a spe very special task. He's going to pass on our fortune of the week. He was the last person to receive the message. So without further ado, what is the message to the best of your memory and understanding? What I heard was skip something sweet, go for something different, or I'll tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for those who came or, or watched last week, this might actually sound very familiar. And in a weird twist of fate, we've had the exact same fortune, but that was actually very different from last week. So just to remind you, the fortune was skip something sweet, go for something healthy. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> skip something sweet for something healthy this week, and you will be rewarded with a kiss from a llama. Ah. <laughs> so it's not quite telling on, on you. Your mother will not be informed. But I think I'd rather someone told my mother than getting a kiss from a llama. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> thank you. <so> ah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to come down, you can come down to the scullery next week. We start filming at 9 p.m. every Thursday. Stay nice and uh, thank you for watching at home and we'll see you next week. All right, thank you. Beat bum, beat bum. Downtown project. Make us meet the hardest. Yeah, yeah. Alright, alright, it's downtown. We running this. Rest the downs is running loose. Creeping on and come up to Vegas. Yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers. Remember like a flashback. Vegas tech. Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.